everybody and welcome to another review and gameplay demo. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite games of all time and in my opinion obviously one of the best cooperative games on the market today. Now in part I am quite biased on this but I absolutely love this game and it is Pandemic. That's right, we're going to be talking all about Pandemic today, and there's a very good reason for it that I'll be talking about in a little bit. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with this, the idea is that you are playing as a, a group of people. There's random roles that you can get. And the idea is that you're trying to stave off a bunch of diseases. Now, depending on how many expansions you have will alter the number of diseases, but the base game, you've got four diseases that you're trying to eradicate. You have different roles that have different capabilities. This is a fully cooperative game, at least the base game is, and the idea is that the disease is spread by, uh, indicated by little cubes that are spreading all over the world. You have to go in and stop them and then you have to cure the diseases, hopefully, and go out and just destroy everything. Now, this is a game that I absolutely adore. I love it because I work in science and on top of that, as far as getting new players into gaming, a game like this works very, very well because we have things like, uh, like for example, Ebola with the, the huge scare and now measles uh, resurging because of anti vaccination people, um, Pandemic is something that people can really grasp the theme of. It's something that is very, very familiar a, even in our modern society when we really arguably shouldn't necessarily have these massive outbreaks or anything like that, but it's still something that's like, oh, okay, we're curing diseases. I understand that. I know why it's important. As opposed to something that's a little bit more abstract, say like Shadows Over Camelot, where it's just kind of like, I mean, I know who King Arthur is, but I don't really care about what he did type of thing. Or maybe you saw Monty Python in the Holy Grail and you think the game is going to be like that, which it isn't, sadly. But regardless, Pandemic, it has a theme that everybody can maybe not necessarily agree on, but at the very least they are familiar with it. So it's something that people can sort of relatively easily pick up and go with. On top of that, the mechanics are fairly simple. It's a very easy game to play, especially if you're playing with somebody who is experienced. But then you can add in a bunch of other stuff. First and foremost, there are actually three expansions to this game now, and that's part of why I'm doing this video. The first expansion was On the Brink. On the Brink added in a ton of new stuff. Primarily, it added new roles. It also added new special cards. And in doing so, it made the game much, much more versatile. One thing that I've always talked about whenever I talk about Pandemic is the modularity of the expansions. The idea is that you don't have to use the entirety of On the Brink. It's not necessary. You, you can use a little bit, you can use all of it, you can use none of it, it doesn't matter. This also added the bioterrorist variant. In other words, it's the, the same type of thing where you essentially have the traitor, where they're going around and they're planting the special disease and all that kind of stuff. This also added things like the individual petri dishes to hold all the pieces and stuff like that. This is a wonderful expan expansion and is a great example of what an expansion should do to a game. It shouldn't be more of the same. It should be more of the same theming, but very, very different aspects, new features and things like that. And On the Brink does an amazing job of that. As of right now, I actually will not play Pandemic without at least On the Brink because this adds so much versatility to the game uh, between the, the new roles and the new special cards. It just makes the game a lot, a lot more fun. And on top of that, you have a lot more replayability with just On the Brink. After On the Brink came out, you had the second expansion, which is In the Lab. In the Lab is a really, really fun expansion and my personal favorite simply because I work in a lab and that's what I do. Incidentally, nobody would ever take a six well culture plate and hold it up like this. Nobody ever would do that. Z-Man Games, if you're listening, change the box. All right, regardless. <laughs> regardless, uh, In the Lab actually adds a very, very cool mechanic where the idea is that you are actually at the CDC working directly on the diseases. It's an abstract way of doing exactly what scientists do to determine how to fight a new pandemic, a new disease, whatever it happens to be. You have to sequence the genome, you have to determine what proteins it expresses, how can you block those, how can you block its capabilities, whatever it happens to be. I'm not going to go into all the detail on it. And the great thing is that neither does Pandemic. That's one 
thing I really, really like about this expansion is it took something that is exceedingly ridiculously complicated and boiled it down to something that you can put in a box. And it makes sense for people and you're thinking like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Obviously, you need to have samples in order to do this. You, you, need, to be, you need to be able to collect the virus, the bacteria, whatever it happens to be. And in doing so, then you're able to then go about testing it in the lab and actually doing something to fix it and to, to get an actual cure involved. So it's really cool. It's an alternative way to cure the diseases, which is really nice. In addition, it, uh, it also adds new roles and events, uh, some of which are specific for the variant within the lab. And one of my favorite things that this added is the solo mechanic. It actually uses the CDC card as sort of a dummy mechanic so that you can play by yourself. And the CDC will essentially send you a little bit of help now and then so that you can play by yourself. It's really great. Previously, when I played by myself, then I would essentially be playing just two or three characters simultaneously because it doesn't really matter. Um, there's, there's no hidden information. It's not designed like that. Um, although it says you should hide information. No, nobody that I've played with ever wants to play like that. So I don't make them. Uh, but as far as the solo game, it actually adds a real solo mechanic that is separate from everything else completely. So for me, I really enjoy that and I greatly appreciate it because it's something that is really, really exciting to see. And on top of that, in addition to the solo game, you also have the team game where you're... Uh, I'm, you are technically competing, but it's like a light competition uh, thing where uh, it's uh, it's uh, somewhat similar to if you think about the goals in Race for the Galaxy, it's uh, whoever's getting to uh, certain checkpoints first type of thing. So uh, you you are on teams, and and that's really cool. It's a it's a really fun little variant that you've got. Uh, in the lab added a great deal of stuff. I I still personally prefer On the Brink. It's it's just my personal favorite for the amount of things that it added. But uh, in the lab, I also greatly enjoy simply because that is the type of work that I personally do. Most recently, though, you know, I'll put that down like that. Most recently, though, we had the release of the newest expansion for Pandemic, which is Pandemic State of Emergency. Oh, no! And the exciting thing for this is that, again, we have new variants, but the coolest thing about this is we have what are known as zoonotic diseases. Zoonotic diseases are diseases that go from animals to people. You can see on the box cover we've got images of a, a chicken, a monkey, a cow, and I believe it's a pig is the other one. Yeah, there's a pig uh, right there. So the idea is that uh, you've got what's called the Hinderlands uh, variant where you've got separate boards that indicate the different animals, and the idea is that the animals are carrying the diseases and you have and they can potentially outbreak just like everything else and it spreads to all of the quote adjacent cities for that particular color it's a wonderful wonderful thing and on top of that it's a um I don't know if it was planned by Z-Man, but it happens to be very topical, simply because we had a lot of issues uh, in the relatively recent past with like Ebola in West Africa. And the thing is that one of the uh, variants in this is the superbug, which is not curable. And the first thing I thought when I read about the superbug was, this sounds exactly like Ebola. Uh, and again, I don't know if that's what they were going for, is they wanted to have that kind of feel. but. They ended up getting it, at least with me, so uh, I, I really like it. This is this is an, another great expansion. I don't like this one as much as the other two, simply because I think that um, while zoonotic diseases are very, very important, and I think that it was a logical progression, I really don't think it was necessary, if you know what I mean. I, I think that uh, this is... Um, not necessarily tacked on because it is really well designed. It's a good game. It's it's fun. Uh, I just again, I just don't think that it was necessary. Just like Pandemic Contagion, I don't think that's a necessary game. Um, but either way, it's a it's this is a really really fun variant. You've got uh, you've also got uh, various things that adjust the difficulty, like the quarantines, which prevent uh, diseases from spreading uh, a little bit more. You've got obviously new uh, new roles, new cards, as always. You also have the instead of the special events, you have the bad events, where uh, it's it's actually a separate variant. Uh, I think it's the emergency events. It's it's like a challenge that you can just tack on to anything that you want. Uh, so there's some really really amazing stuff in in this one but the hinderlands is really the biggest thing with uh having the zoonotic diseases but uh either way this is this is pandemic collectively this is the most recent expansion state of emergency and like i said that's this is why i wanted to do this video is because we had this new release uh for state of emergency but 
I'm very, very excited to, to move forward with this, so I'm going to get straight off into what this game is similar to. As far as what the game is similar to, you could argue pretty much any cooperative game that is out there. But my personal thing is that I tend to compare this more to Shadows Over Camelot, just in terms of the functionality, the mechanics of the game. Uh, mostly with the addition of On the Brink and having the Bioterrorist, because the Bioterrorist acts very, very similarly to the traitor mechanic of Shadows Over Camelot. But other than that, there's a ton of cooperative games that you can argue are similar, where uh, you've got uh, Castle Panic is probably the, the most similar, because in that you're doing a similar sort of like trying to stave off bad guys type of thing, and you know, you need to have the right card, you have to have the right color, and uh, I mean, Pandemic, very, very similar to that. The thing is that now, Pandemic has become so swole that it's very difficult to pick a single game uh, to which this is similar, simply because it now has so many different mechanics, even though they're all based off of the same base system, it's still very difficult to pick just one or even two games that this really, really fits with. But regardless, I think it's really fun. I obviously greatly enjoy this game. It is my favorite cooperative game of all time. But with that, I am going to go right on ahead into the massive gameplay guide for how to play not only Pandemic, the base game, but how you can add in any or all of these great expansions. We're just about all set up and ready to play Pandemic. I've done a couple of, uh, some of the initial setup, but I wanted to show you all uh, what exactly is going on. First off, the overall goal for this game is that we are trying to cure four different diseases. The diseases here represented by different colored cubes, and you can see here at the bottom we have these round cardboard tokens. Those represent when we actually get the diseases cured. After we have cured all four diseases, then we have won the game, and the game just stops, and the players win no matter what the board looks like. So as we are playing, there's going to be diseases spreading all across the world, and we have to stop the diseases from spreading while at the same time trying to cure them using different means. Uh, I have three players uh, set up to play right here. You can see we're all starting right there. Everybody starts in Atlanta because we're coming from the CDC effectively. And you can see here we have this little, uh, this little house token looking thing that represents a research station. And we start with one in Atlanta. There's a couple of other little things to set up that we need. First off, we have this player deck. The player deck has a card for every city on the board. Uh, you can see here these, uh, these major points are the different cities and they are color coded for the disease immediately associated with them. And each city has a single card. There's a total of 48 cards in the deck right now. And this is, um, and these will be uh, very, very important commodities throughout the game. Okay? We also have this, this is the infection deck, and this is how things spread around. Very, very unpleasant, right? Now for this initial part, I'm just gonna show you how the basic game works, how you, how you just play in general. After this, I'm going to show you some of the major variants. I'm gonna show you a major variant from each of the three expansions that are currently out. Uh, just to give you an idea of how they can change the dynamic of the game, but not necessarily really go in depth into what's, uh, what exactly is going on. So, uh, to finish the setup, we've got a couple of other things. We need some of these special event cards. Uh, these have the same backs as the regular player cards, and these are very, very helpful cards that can do any number of things. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle these in here, uh, or at least try to get them as, as best as we can. I do have all of these cards sleeved, so it's a little bit unpleasant to shuffle them. Obviously, you can do whatever you wish. But these are going to serve as our hands, and these are also going to be uh, somewhat detrimental, potentially, as well, which is very unpleasant. But each of the roles has some special ability that helps everybody out. Um, they can help people move around, they can treat diseases more effectively, all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, but I'll get into the, the turn order in just a, a little bit. Uh, but right now it's important to note I do have some of the elements from On the Brink, for example, these little petri dishes. 
come from On the Brink. Some of the uh, the cards are from On the Brink, like some of the rolls and things like that. Uh, they were replaced in uh, things of that nature. Okay. So with three players, each person gets three cards. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. As I've mentioned several times, this is a cooperative game, and um, you're not ne you're not necessarily discouraged from showing everybody what your hand is. But the problem is with a couple of the variants, it's important to keep it secret. Uh, for the purpose of this, though, I'll go ahead and show what everybody has. So uh, the operations expert, this player right here, has Kinshasa, the event which is remote treatment, and Riyadh as the three cards. Our quarantine specialist has Osaka, Bangkok, and Cairo. Okay. And then our researcher has Shanghai, Montreal, and New York. The basic means that this, this game goes by, the basic way that it works, is actually fairly simple. On your turn, you take four actions. There are several different actions that you can take, and it comes with these nice little cards to help you out. Drive or ferry just means that you're moving along these red lines. So you can see the, uh, the red line. Uh, let me zoom in so you can see them a little bit better. So you see the red lines that directly connect uh, adjacent cities. That is one action. So for example, if I wanted to take my researcher here and move to Washington, that is one, and then I could go two, or I could go one, two, three, four, whatever you want. Right? That is an example of a single action. Uh, the direct flight allows you to leave for a city um, by discarding a card that uh, has that, that same city on it. So, for example, my operations expert has Riyadh. So if I discarded my Riyadh card, then I'd be able to take my operations expert and fly directly to Riyadh, which is right over there. So it saves a lot of time, effectively. But you lose the card unfortunately. And I'll tell you why that's important in a little bit. Charter flight is the opposite of a direct flight. So say that my operations expert was already in Riyadh, then you can discard the Riyadh card and then you can fly anywhere you want, uh, which is obviously a lot more versatile. Shuttle flight is you are able to move between the little research station tokens and uh, you can actually place those down as an action. So on the back here, we've got more actions. The build, build a research station is discard the city card that matches the city you're in, and you place it there. Now, the operations expert is actually special because as an action, they can build a research station in the city you're in without discarding a card. So it's very, very powerful because using the ability to shift between the research stations is extremely helpful. Treat disease is just you remove a single disease cube. Uh, these are going to get stacked up and up and up and up. And if you spend one action, you remove one of those cubes uh, from the city that you're in. Share knowledge is either giving the card that matches the city you're in to another player, or you take the card from another player. And you have to be in the city together. So for example, if both of us are in Riyadh, then the operations expert could give the Riyadh card to the researcher, or if it's the researcher's turn, they could take the, research, the uh, Riyadh card from the operations expert, right? Last but not least is discover a cure. This is the hardest thing, but it's also how you win the game. When you discover a cure, a, to discover a cure at any research station, you have to discard five city cards of the same color and then you cure the disease. And to represent that a disease is cured, all you do is you take the small token here and you move it down on top of the symbol. And that indicates you have cured that disease. After a disease is, is cured, it changes a couple of things. The treat disease action, instead of removing only a single cube, will remove all of the cubes of that color from the city. So it's a, it's a pretty big deal. And then uh, if you completely eliminate the, the disease from the board, then you flip it over and you get the eradication symbol. If a disease is eradicated, then even if you draw a card that has that color on it that would normally put uh, that disease back on the board, you ignore it, right? So with that, we're just about uh, ready to play here. There's just a couple of more, more things we have to do. First, we need some initial infections. And in order to do that, we draw a total of nine cards from our infection deck here. So there's Algiers, New York, and Lagos. 
I draw them in groups of three because that's how how it works. Where uh, the first three all get three cubes. So there's Algiers. There's New York. And Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. The next three receive two cubes. Santiago, Kolkata, and Washington. So there is Santiago, Kolkata. No, Kolkata is around. That's Karachi. There's Kolkata and Washington right next to us. And last but not least, we draw three more, and each of those get a single cube. Moscow, Chennai, and Mexico City. Mexico City, and then there's Moscow, and Chennai. Okay? That is one thing that we have to do. The other thing we have to do is we have to put these sort of mines inside of the player deck. These are the epidemic cards. The epidemic cards, essentially what they do is they make everything worse. What they're going to do is they're going to take the discards of our infections, and they're going to shuffle them up and put them back on top. So very, very unpleasant and potentially very dangerous. One important thing is that if you have three cubes on a city and you need to add one more of that same color, then you have an outbreak. And what that means is every single city surrounding it, every single city connected by those red lines will receive a cube. So the disease just spreads massively. Very, very unpleasant, very, very bad. The epidemic cards, there's actually two different variants. Uh, in the base set, you only have these, the green variants that do a very basic thing. But then if you, uh, starting off with the On the Brink expansion, you actually get a couple of new ones. Well, not a couple, but you get a new type, which is called the Virulent Strain. The Virulent Strain actually gives you continuing issues with a specific virus, or not virus, but disease. So, uh, for example, the outbreaks of a virulent strain add two cubes instead of just one. So the thing that I just described as an outbreak, instead of adding one, you add two. Very, very bad. Because that means that other cities will outbreak even faster and just spreads and spreads and spreads. Very, very unpleasant. I'm going to set this up for a normal game, so-called, which is five epidemic cards. Um, you can start off with, uh, I believe, four is the one that is uh, considered an easy game. Uh, and if you want to go uh, more or fewer, that is up to you. So we want to split these into approximately five equal piles. And these, these two are a little bit short. So I'll go ahead and add a couple here. All right. And then we add an epidemic card onto each one. Ideally, you would just sit here and count out cards so that you know exactly what you're dealing with but not for me, right? So after this, we will be completely finished and ready to start playing. All right. And it's just gonna get worse from here. The important thing is, uh, as, as I've said several times, this is a cooperative game, so you need to coordinate. It is absolutely vital that you talk to your other players. It's important that they know what color cards that you have. Because again, that's how, that is how you end up, um, you end up curing the different diseases, is, uh, is by uh, going through that, uh, by getting the, the specific colors that you need. Okay, so we're done, ready to go. We'll start off with the operations expert. So if you remember, the operations expert, their big thing is that they can actually go and drop the research stations all around the board, which makes moving around much, much easier. So we're actually going to take, uh, we're, we're actually going to do something a little bit bold. We're going to go right on ahead and do the direct flight to Riyadh. So there's that. So that's one action, two, move to Baghdad, and then three, go ahead and drop a research station. So now it's much easier for everybody else to get here. That's essentially the point for that. And four, move to Karachi. And that's the end of the turn. That's the end of the operations expert's turn. Okay? Now, at the end of your turn, you draw two new player cards. We got Buenos Aires and Essen. Okay?
Not too bad, not too bad. Reasonable. And then we draw two infection cards, and each of these cards will get a single cube. So we got Tokyo and Soul. So there is Soul in Tokyo. All right. Next up is the quarantine specialist. The quarantine specialist is actually pretty cool. Prevent disease cube placements and outbreaks in the city you are in and all connected cities to it. So the quarantine specialist is really good just to plop down in the middle of like a really bad web. For example, here in Paris or Baghdad because they actually have a lot of connections. Let me take a look here. So you can see all of the connections with Paris and then all the con connections with Baghdad. Baghdad actually has the research station right now. So those are both very good places for the quarantine specialist just to sort of hang out uh, simply because it'll help out a lot. So I made the quarantine special the, the white pawn. So that's one move because it's just going from a research station to another research station. Two, three, and then get rid of a cube. Remember, having three cubes is extremely bad because that means there's potential for an outbreak. But that's the end of the quarantine specialist's turn. And we got Bogota and Khartoum as the two cards. There is a hand limit. I believe it is seven cards. After you reach seven cards, you have to discard down. So you end up getting a lot of issues fairly quickly. Um, the researcher here, this uh, person is next, as, as an action you may give uh, any city card from your hand, you must both be in the same city, the card does not have to match the city you're in. So the researcher is actually really great because that character actually breaks that very, very, very restrictive rule about when you can give cards and what cards you're able to give. So what the researcher is going to do is move one, two to New York, and then three, four, get rid of two cubes from that because each uh, cube removal is one action. Oh, awesome. So a special card, uh, select a player. This player may swap his role with anyone and then Ho Chi Minh City. All right, so that's, that's the basics of how you're, you're moving forward. And uh, I actually forgot to infect after both of these. So we need Osaka, Los Angeles, Sao Paulo, and Cairo. I apologize for that. Los Angeles, Bottom, and Osaka was the other one. Okay. I forgot to draw the infection at the end of the, the other turn there. Um, one thing I, I forgot to mention, uh, after an epidemic happens, this will move up, and this indicates how many cards you draw at the end of the turn. All right? So that's the end of the researcher's turn. Now we are back to the operations expert. What I was planning on doing with the operations expert was heading over to the red area here so we could drop down another research station. Uh, just to enable people to move around the board much more efficiently, like I said. All right? So what he's going to do is go one, two, then three, and four. Drop one in Hong Kong. This is not necessarily the best use of the actions, but it's entirely up to you. Talk to the people that you're playing with, figure out what works best for you and, um, and the, the way that you guys are working. Oh no, we got an epidemic. No! Right? But also got Taipei, which is very nice. Good to have a red card. So epidemics, increase. Move the infection rate marker forward one space. Boink. Infect. Draw the bottom card from the infection deck and place three cubes on that city and then discard the card. Milan. Oh, Milan. Oh, and the quarantine specialist isn't there. So this is our quarantine specialist and that would have been very, very helpful. That is a shame. Okay, now the really bad part is the intensify. Shuffle the cards in the infection discard pile and put them back on the top of the deck. That's where we take all of these fellas. Give them a quick shuffle. Oops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now what we're hoping we don't get would be Milan or Lagos. Since they both have three cubes, that means that each one of those would outbreak uh, if we ended up getting those cards. But we are thankfully still at only two. So let's go ahead and try. Cairo. Cairo actually doesn't get anything because it's adjacent to where our quarantine specialist is. So that's very helpful. And Milan. Oh, shoot. All right. 
So what happens now is the outbreak. There's a couple of things that we do. First, we move our outbreak marker. And now all of the connected cities get one. So Essen gets one, but thankfully, because of where our quarantine specialist is, neither Istanbul nor Paris get, uh, get the blue marker. So it could have been a lot worse, but it's not as bad uh, as, <laughs> it's, it's not good either. After you get eight outbreaks, then you also fail. Uh, there's, there's a lot of ways to lose this game, and unfortunately there's only one way to actually win. But either way, that is the general flow of the game. Eventually, you're going to want to make sure that you can get together, get close to one another, so that you can trade cards as needed. Um, hopefully, you'll have somebody like the researcher so that you can more easily trade the cards. The operations expert is great for helping people move around. But this is the general flow. This is generally how the game functions, how the game works. Um, so like I said, this is essentially just the base game. The only things that are added from on the brink are uh, just some of the uh, like some of the ancillary uh, pieces and some of the cards and things like that. So nothing really major, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start getting into the variants. I'm going to start with one of the favorite variants, which is from On the Brink, and that is the Bioterrorist variant. But uh, for that, I'm actually going to leave everything set up as it is and just show you how it changes the flow of the game. All right. So we're here and we're ready to play the variant with the bioterrorist. There's a couple of very, very important things that this changes, chief amongst which is the actual table dynamic. I mentioned before when talking about the base game that playing with your cards out in the open with everybody to see isn't necessarily a bad thing. The problem is the bioterrorist shouldn't be able to see those. And that's when it becomes a problem for everybody to just play with their cards out on the board. Okay. There's a couple of changes during setup, but not too, too many. First and foremost is whenever you are putting the special cards into the deck, you count the bioterrorist as a player. So in this case, there would be four uh, players total. So that would be eight cards instead of just six cards. And then the bioterrorist actually gets two cards from the infection pile as their hand, right? The bioterrorist also gets this sheet to keep track of their movements and a pencil. Um, because this is how they stay hidden when the rest of the people are essentially co-op against them. So the first thing that the bioterrorist does is they say what city they are going to start in. And I am going to start in Kirachi. So, so you see, you just write down in starting city, Kirachi. Right? Um, the bioterrorist goes every single turn after the players have done the infection phase. Then it's the bioterrorist turn, and they have uh, several different things that they can do. But the bioterrorist gets upwards of three actions that they're allowed to perform. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let our operations expert go. So the op actually no, uh, whose turn was it? The quarantine specialist. So quarantine specialist will head down to Lagos. One, two. Now you might be wondering, if you saw the first part of the video, why aren't you going up to Milan? It just out, it just had the outbreak. Well, exactly, it just had the outbreak, so it's much less likely that there's going to be an issue unless an epidemic comes up. And if an epidemic comes up, then there is way more problems than anything else anyway. So yeah, we won't bother with that. Uh, so our quarantine specialist went to Lagos, right? And then they draw cards. And they're super secret. Shh. It's Hong Kong and Chicago. Don't tell the terrorist. Shh. Right? And now we actually got to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, good. Don't have too many cards. All right. Next, we are infecting. Oh, Lagos. And it's the quarantine specialist, so nothing actually happens, thankfully. And Santiago. So Santiago gets a third which is not so great. All right, now it's the bioterrorist turn. So the bioterrorist can do actions that are very, very similar to the other players. But one important difference is that the bioterrorist uses these purple cubes. The purple cubes represent a completely separate disease from the other four that the bioterrorist is going around and spreading. So if you remember, I started off in Karachi and I've got these two, I've got Chennai and I've got Tokyo. So, we're going to see what we can do here. There's a couple of different things. You can do the regular drive-in ferry, just like anybody else, following the red lines. Direct flight, same thing, except you discard the infection card. 
Charter flight, same thing, discard the infection card. Infect locally just means that you place a cube in the city that in which you are right now. Infect remotely, you discard the card and then you infect that city. Sabotage is you destroy the um, a research center by discarding the card associated with the city. Draw a card is exactly that, you just draw an infection card. And then escape is only if you are captured. Um, so getting captured is uh, rather unpleasant, but it's certainly possible. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple of cool things here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to remotely infect Tokyo. Okay. So we discard that card and then we'll write down Tokyo. So Tokyo and we put a slash through it. So this is just the suggested annotation for what you did. So like right here, infect Tokyo remotely, put the, uh, the slash through it. So Tokyo now gets a purple cube in addition uh, to the red cube that it has. Very, very bad, very unpleasant. Okay, and then I'm going to, what am I going to do? I, I am currently in Karachi, so I am actually going to, just so that I can show you what I, uh, how it works. Uh, actually, first I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a card. So just put a dot that indicates that I'm drawing a card. Did I get something better? Ooh, Kolkata. Okay, okay. All right, so I am going to use the Chennai card. This will be a direct flight. So what you do when you, when you say this, you'll say this is a direct, uh, you don't say it's a direct flight, but you write down um, that you did a, a direct flight. Oops, I put this in the wrong pile. So that's Chennai. Okay, so you see direct flight to Chennai. And now what you say is the bioterrorist is seen at the Chennai airport. So the problem is the players don't know if that means you're coming or going but they know that they saw you. They know that you were there doing something. So whether it's you were leaving with a uh, charter flight or arriving with a direct flight, they don't know. All right, but now it's the researcher's turn. The researcher is still stuck over here in New York. So they are actually, uh, first we'll take a look at the cards. See, unfortunately you're, you're split. You got two and two, so it's, uh, this is, it's, very, very difficult to determine what to do when you've got a split like that, unfortunately. Three, four. Just to start off on that. And then they're drawing cards. Shh! Look at that! Two blues! Ah! Almost cured! Gore! Alright. And then the researcher will infect Washington and Moscow. So there's Moscow and there's Washington. Now it is time for the bioterrorist to go again. So currently we are in Chennai, and then we will go ahead and do a local infection. So we circle it just like that. So Chennai local infection, put a purple cube there. And the thing is we put down the purple cube, but we don't actually say whether it was local or if it was, um, if, if it used the card. The thing is that obviously if you use the card, you discard the card and that was clearly remote. I did not discard a card, which means that I am in Chennai, which means that I got to get out. So I'm going to go ahead and drive over to Kolkata. And then charter flight. So I will say I am seen at the Kolkata airport and I will head down to, where, where should I go? I'll head over to Mexico City. All right, and that's the end of the bioterrorist turn. Okay, so that's, that's how it really changes. You can see this vastly changes the dynamic amongst the players at the table. Now there's a fifth disease that uh, the, the players have to worry about. You can see there's the, the little cure thing. You can cure the purple disease by uh, having uh, any combination of five cards, if I'm not mistaken. 
Um, curing the Purple's Disease, yes. Discards five city cards, any combination of colors at the research station, but at least one of those cards must depict a city which currently contains one or more purple cubes. So in order to cure it, you would need the Chennai player card or the Tokyo player card right now. But that's how the Bioterrorist uh, works. You can see it's, I mean, it vastly changes the dynamic. There's a, a huge difference in how the players are interacting with one another. There's a huge difference now in uh, trying to figure out where the person is. Incidentally, if you are caught, let's say that I was in Khartoum and our good friend the quarantine specialist moved to Khartoum, then I would have to say as the bioterrorist, oh, you have seen the bioterrorist. And then you take the black pawn and you put it on the board. So now everybody knows that I'm there. And if, if you are spotted, then uh, a player in the same city can actually capture you. And if you are captured, then you go onto that person's roll card, and then uh, you have to use the escape action. And the escape action is you just discard an infection card to escape with a direct flight. And you, you still have to say, I am in this city. I, uh, so for example, if I used Mexico City, then I would say, I am seen in Mexico City, and if it's an escape, then it's obvious that I'm in Mexico City. Um, but that's, that's it. So then you just take it back, I would put it back on my roll, and I would write down, I am now in Mexico City. All right? So that's, that's how the bioterrorist variant works. It's, it's pretty fun. It adds um, a, lot more, a lot more player dynamics, a, a lot more intrigue amongst everybody. And uh, on top of that, I, I know uh, in the rule book, it actually recommends that you play with a fairly large number of people. Um, so this challenge works with three or four players, uh, five players, one bioterrorist, and four players is not recommended. So in other words, this is a perfect number because part of the problem is you don't want everybody spread around the board and then the bioterrorist has no, uh, nowhere to find, nowhere to be seen or nowhere to hide effectively. But either way, it's a fun variant. It's a really great little variant. The only major issue I have with it is that it can take a little bit more time because you've got the bioterrorist sitting there having to write down everything that they do. And you know, this is just so that um, you know, if, if you have those people who really, really care, then they can look and see exactly what the bioterrorist did. Um, hopefully you won't have people like that, but that's the, that's the idea. You know, everybody's staying honest, even the bioterrorist. But either way, with that, we are going to move right along. I'm going to talk about the next major variant, which comes to us from in the lab, and this will be the lab variant. All right. We're here and we're ready to play my personal favorite variant for Pandemic, which is the lab variant, or uh, in the lab variant, the, the lab challenge as it's called. The way that this works is it actually adds more steps before you can successfully cure a disease. It still costs you a total of five cards of the correct color, but you need to go through several other steps before you actually do it. So let me zoom in here on the actual lab board so you know what I'm talking about here. All right, so when you treat a disease, when you do your normal go around, treat a disease, and you, you put it uh, back in the supply, instead, you can actually put them in here into one of these two little dishes. So eventually, you're gonna get to the point where you've got you know like some, something along these lines here. So you just have a random menagerie of diseases, right? Hopefully, you don't let it get that big, but that's essentially what happens. Any lab action that you take has to be done at a research station. The only thing that you can do otherwise is doing the treat disease and then sending it over here to the lab. That is the only thing that you can do when you are not at a research station. And essentially the idea is that you are sending the samples back uh, so that they can be analyzed. The idea behind this is that you are characterizing the disease and sequencing it so that you know how to cure it. That is the general idea. And that's what these uh, two things are right here. Those give you the, um, the abstract way of analyzing whatever this uh, disease happens to be, right? We actually have new cards that represent the different actions that you're able to do when you are actually in the lab. So you can see characterize a disease. That's actually, uh, that actually lets you say what, uh, what, um, 
what disease it's actually going to be related to. If you look at the top right corner of that card that I've got right there, you actually do put one down uh, during setup. Then you can see that this actually has the images of all five disease colors, including purple, right? Which means that when you characterize it, you can say any of those. The problem is, for example, with this card, these two right here have to be the color of the disease that ends up being characterized, okay? After the disease has been characterized, then you can process your samples. That's another action, right? Processing the samples allows you to move things between these dishes. So you've got the centrifuge, which allows you to separate out everything except what you want. For example, if I just want these blues, then I'll put the blues here and then I'll put everything else uh, back over here. We also have the cell separator which allows you to take one of each color, however many colors there are, and put them there. And then any, any doubles are put back, right? Just like that, okay? Uh, the, the other action that you can take, the other movement possibility is the growth action, where you take these and you double however many you've got. So for example, with these blues, since I've got two, then I would put two more, and now I have done the growth, right? So that is the sample processing phase. And keep in mind that each movement between those dishes causes an action. So this is quite a lot of work. You wanna make sure that you've got a decent amount in these dishes before you start messing around with this stuff, right? Uh, but the first thing that you would wanna do is characterize a disease. For example, our researcher friend left off with four blue cards. So we will say that our researcher is in our Baghdad Research Center and she characterizes this particular disease as the blue, right? So you put the first thing right there. That's what the microscope indicates. That is the, um, that is the characterized space. And then you take whatever appropriate vial is, whatever the color is, and you put it on top just like that. So now this is going to be the blue cure because it has the big blue thing on top of it, all right? Uh, the test a cure is something else that you have to do, and that's when you spend a second card. So if the research line sequence card has any cubes on it, which unfortunately ours does not yet, you can place the city card in the cure or in the test, which is the little syringe there, and you remove a cube of that color from any city and you put it back, right? That's how you spend the second card, all right? Remember I said it still costs you five. Okay, that is the second one. Um, you can also sequence the disease, which is the, you draw the sequence card, which is this pile right here. You can place, swap, or discard it. So remember, we only start with one, but uh, we can get another one. We can get a second one started if we want to. Uh, the thing is that if the swapped one and its cure vial still matches, then we are actually able to keep it and any matching cube. So if we get another one that's blue, we'd be able to swap that one out, hopefully with one that has uh, far fewer cubes required. Uh, just to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that you've got here. Um, so there are various numbers. So there, see, that's a, a very, very easy red one. There's a very easy blue, relatively easy blue or black. Um, they, they range both in number and complexity and uh, the, the amount of uh, cubes that are required in order to actually complete the cure, okay? So in order to completely finish the cure, you have to characterize it first. Characterizing is putting the first card down to show this will be for the blue disease. Um, you have to test it, which is the second card that will let you remove a single cube. And then after that, you are able to discover the cure. Once all of this is filled up with every single thing that you need, with all of the cubes that you need, then you are able to cure the disease, which means that you go to a research station and you take three more cards and then you have the disease cured. You take this little thing and you put it on its symbol on the main board. Oops, sorry about that. So you can see there on the, on the main board down there. All right. So that's how the, the in the lab variant works. I'll, I'll go ahead and run through a couple of rounds. Uh, so hopefully you can get uh, at least somewhat of an idea uh, of how it works. We'll uh, take this back uh, right quick and we'll put that back up there. But this, this is another variant that's gonna require a lot more discussion because you're using a lot, a lot of actions that would otherwise be used for you know actually getting rid of the disease cubes, okay? 
Uh, but we left off with our good friend, the operations expert. So we will let uh, we will let him take care of this. And you can see we do have a uh, a red up there. So potentially we can try that. But the thing is that we really need a bunch of black. So what we'll do is we'll have him move here and go one, two, three, and move in there. So you see here uh, with the treat disease, uh, we. You remove one disease cube from the city you are in. If this color is cured, remove all of them. And you may put one removed cube, cube in a sample dish. Now, the thing is that this is a, a little bit iffy because technically I used the action twice. So do I get both of them? Do I not get both of them? Uh, do I only get one? It's, it's a tough call. I say that I get both because it was two separate actions because there is a, a specific role, the medic, that actually lets you remove all of the disease cubes with a single action. And in that case, then you can only get one uh, per, per treat disease. But for this, I mean, I, I treated twice, so I think that I get to both of the cubes, but I will say I am not completely certain uh, that that is exactly how it works, right? And then I will head back down to Chennai, right? So that was the operations expert. Go ahead and draw my two cards. I got an epidemic. No. And I got Miami. So epidemic, first thing, we move this up. Draw from the bottom. Bogota gets three. Oh, this is bad. This is very, very bad. And then we reshuffle. Thankfully, we're still only drawing two. That's nice. Washington and Chennai. Washington, and there is Chennai. All right, next up is our quarantine expert. So the thing is, I'm trying to get a bunch of black so that I can fill that out because that's going to be very unpleasant. So we would go one, two, oops, two, and three, four. Okay, so that's it for our quarantine specialist. She goes ahead and draws Lagos and Manila. And now, unfortunately, she's got more than seven cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, weak. So she has to get rid of two. And you can see here, she's, she's got four reds, but she's got these random blue and black. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those. All right. And then, Bogota blows up and Santiago also blows up all right so that's boom boom that's two outbreaks here is the Bogota outbreak there's Sao Paulo Miami didn't I draw Miami no I drew the, uh, the card for that that's what it was Lima will get two because both Bogota and Santiago are blowing up and now this is obviously a pretty big problem I don't think we're gonna be able to make it by the time we get to state of emergency um, but for now, the researcher uh, is actually at the research station, so they will first go ahead and characterize. That is one action. So this is not blue. And then second action, move this. Third action is to double them. And then the fourth action will be to sequence, which means that you take however many are in here, and then you are able to put them down as you see fit on a single card. You cannot put the, I like, if I had a second card here, I would not be able to use these black cubes on that card. I can only use them on one card, unfortunately. But that's it. So that's the first part, and now we still need blue cubes, we still need red cubes, still need yellow cube for that. So realistically, it might have been a better idea to try to swap that card out, but either way, that's it. That's how in the lab works. Um, it's it completely eliminates the the miniature tokens here uh, for for curing the disease. Everything has to go through the lab itself, and obviously you're going to need at least two rounds of the cards uh, for four uh, for four of the cures because you can only work on any two cures at at once. But it is nice because you don't need all five cards simultaneously. That. That is the really big difference and the very nice change for it.
But with that, uh, thanks so much for watching uh, this part for In the Lab. I'm going to move right on ahead to the hinderlands with the state of emergency. Uh, though before I go, uh, very briefly, uh, a couple of other variants that In the Lab added. Uh, the first thing is the actual the team game, which added some cool stuff, uh, added uh, goals of various sorts. If you've played Race for the Galaxy, then you're familiar with the, uh, the goals. Although Race for the Galaxy obviously doesn't do the team aspect. The other major thing, and one of my favorites, is also the solo game. So the solo game adds the CDC card where after infections each turn, you can do one action where you move yourself, you reassign your role, you can exchange the data, draw a card, or discover a cure. It essentially gives you an extra action and a lot more power, a lot more capability, because the CDC is sort of your remote helper. It's like the dummy aspect, the dummy helper for the uh, the solo game. So it was pretty cool. Uh, in the lab added a good deal. I just wanted to show this main variant. Uh, I'm not gonna show the solo variant here, but if you guys are curious, I'll be happy to do another video for it. But for now, over and onward to the hinderlands and state of emergency. All right, and now we are ready to play the most recent expansion for Pandemic, which is State of Emergency. Amongst other things, this adds in the Hinderlands, which are these two boards on the sides here, that add what are known as zoonotic diseases. In other words, the ones that come from animals. So you can see here, we've got the cow, we've got the monkey, we've got the pig, and we've got the chicken. And the idea with the Hinderlands is that they're actually connected to several cities on the board. And you can see them by these little colored plastic discs right here. Right, so just to, uh, to zoom in to show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's go over here to yellow. So I don't know how well you can see on the Hinderlands board, but there we've got Lagos, Khartoum, and Kinshasa. And the Hinderlands is effectively the spot right in the middle of the board. But to, in order to help people out, they are marked by these little plastic ones. So that way you can tell where the hinderlands are or where they're connected to. The hinderlands essentially act as a new city. It's a new location that you're able to move to. So in other words, if you're in Sao Paulo or if you're in Kinshasa or Khartoum or Lagos, then you can actually go to this, just like you would go back and forth between any of these connections. And what happens is before you do the infections, you actually roll this die and that determines if you're going to add another cube onto the hinderlands. Whenever you start, whenever you first set up the game, you also add, um, add in several of them. So uh, when you infect the cities with the three, two, and one uh, cubes, then you also place a disease cube of the matching color onto a hinderland space, and then you place the hinderlands die on top of the infection deck so that you're reminded to, uh, to infect first. It actually goes right here. And that way you're reminded to roll the die first before you actually do that. Um, but, uh, but that's pretty much it. The, like I said, it changes the dynamic a lot uh, as far as where, where you have to go, where you're going to need to stop things. And one of the bigger things too is how it alters the way that you can exchange cards. Because you know normally you have to be in the same city and it has to be that card, that city card. But now instead, uh, for the shared knowledge, when you're in the hinderland space with another player, either give any city card matching the color to that player or take any, uh, any city card of that color. So if there's two people in the yellow, then you can exchange any yellow cards. It doesn't matter what the city is because the hinderlands themselves do not have cards but you can actually put a research station in the hinderlands although you would have to be somebody like the operations expert or use the government grant card because that does not require a city card all right so we'll go ahead and just get started and we will uh we'll start off with uh let's let's do the uh, the quarantine uh person i honestly don't remember who was last up i do apologize for that um so our quarantine expert is up here so we will go one two three and four into Bogota there, and uh, and just cure that just like that. Uh, so the quarantine specialist now drawing Karachi and Milan. Although we still have the problem of having way too many of the same cards, so unfortunately, gotta get rid of some of those. Now, before we infect, we roll the die. Uh, on on this, if you look at the uh, the four sides here, it's one one of each. The, uh, the chicken, the pig, the cow, and the, um, the monkey. And then the, the other two sides are blank. 
right? We have rolled the cow, and therefore the cow gets another die. Just like any city, the hinterlands can outbreak, and if it outbreaks, it spreads to all of the connected cities. So for example, if Blue did the outbreak, it would go to San Francisco, Chicago, Atlanta, and London, which would be fairly unpleasant, all right? But we still gotta infect now. Uh, Lagos and Milan. Incidentally, the same is true the other way around as well, where if a city outbreaks and it's connected to the hinderlands, then it would add one to the hinderlands as well. Okay. Uh, next up is our researcher. The researcher. What is the researcher going to do? Oh, man. This is a tough call. Very, very tough. Uh, what is this special card? The newest sign. That doesn't do a whole lot of good, unfortunately. Oh, man. This is rough. Quite rough. Very difficult. Very, very difficult. Um, so here, just to show you how it works. We'll go to Karachi. That's one. And then since it's connected to the hinderlands, two, we're in the hinderlands now. Right? And then three to cure. But now, since we were here, then we can actually go straight to Chennai. And that would be four. Right? So we sort of skipped over a little bit there, which is kind of nice. But we can still run into a lot of issues. Ah, Mexico City and Mumbai. Unfortunately, those uh, actually will keep Mexico City, but get rid of Mumbai and then Ho Chi Minh City. But now our Black Hinderlands are are perfectly fine. Well, yeah, they currently don't have anything blank. We don't put anything in the Hinderlands this turn. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's that's the the basic uh, dynamic for uh, for how this this is now changed. Just to give you an example of uh, of what might happen uh, if we've got the the hinderlands in the blue full here, and then we roll the cow again, boom. And then we have our outbreak. So then you see it goes Chicago, San Francisco, Atlanta, and London. All right, just like that. And that that's how the how the hinderlands outbreak would work. It does still count as an outbreak, and you can also have chain outbreaks, just like anything else where, um, for example, if both Bogota and, um, and Lagos were to, uh, were to outbreak, then it would cause Sao Paulo to outbreak, and it's just, it's a huge mess, big giant mess, very unpleasant. In addition, this would probably outbreak as well, and totally insane, absolutely insane. But the Hinderlands is actually very, very fun. Uh, I really like it mostly because it adds both additional difficulty while at the same time making certain aspects a lot easier. For example, trading out the cards is much, much easier with the Hinderlands, um, with the Hinderlands challenge. The problem is making sure that the Hinderlands themselves stay in check in addition to all of the other, other cities that you are already dealing with, right? That said, uh, as far as the expansion goes and as far as the challenges go, this is actually a relatively minor addition compared to, say, the, uh, the lab edition or the, uh, the bioterrorist, where this is downright tame in terms of the mechanics involved. So if you're looking to add one, this is a pretty cool one to do. And on top of that, it's also uh, really topical, obviously, because a lot of diseases are spread by uh, different animals. That said, there's a lot of other things that uh, this particular expansion adds. Uh, some of them are actually uh, pretty interesting. One, one, of, um, m one of my personal favorites are these little tokens here. These are the quarantine tokens, right? Uh, if you're playing with the quarantine variant, then it costs a single action to quarantine a city. And you can quarantine it by just sticking it right there. So there, now Milan is quarantined. And now, instead of adding a new cube to it, you would just flip this over to the one, and then if another cube was trying to be added, you would get rid of it. So in other words, this is essentially saving you from two cubes being added to a city. It's pretty awesome. You actually uh, use four of those, or you can use the new roll, which is the colonel, and if you're playing with the colonel, the military, uh, then you get, uh, you get access to all six. So you notice know, so these, these cards aren't sleeved just yet. I, I only recently uh, got this expansion, unfortunately. But I wanted to talk about two, there's two other major uh, possibilities here. Uh, the first one are the emergency events, the emergency event challenge. Now the emergency event challenge is really, really cruel. 
uh, what you do is you take the emergency events and you put them into the player deck the same way that you do with the epidemics where you split it into the, the different uh, groups and then you put the same number of emergency events as you do epidemics. And these are the events that we get but they are very very bad. For example, containment failure. When doing the next outbreak, add two, not one disease cubes to each connected city. Very, very terrible. Place this card face up and discard it after the next outbreak. So it just tells you how, how you would keep track of it. Here you go, disease hotspot. Draw one card from the bottom of the infection deck, and then if the disease is not eradicated, add three cubes. Just boom, just like that. It's essentially another epidemic, but without reshuffling the, the cards and putting them back. Very unpleasant. So it's just a, a, it's additional nasty stuff that's going to happen to you. Last but not least, the other major variant that came with State of Emergency is one that I believe is actually directly based off of Ebola. And this particular one is called the Superbug Challenge. The Superbug Challenge actually gives you uh, some pretty interesting stuff. The biggest part of this is actually the vaccines. You cannot treat the Superbug. You can only use a, um, you can only use a vaccine in order to get rid of it from a city. Um, so you can see here, there's the superbug mutation. These, uh, these two cards actually go in the infection deck. I don't know if you can see the back of it there. Um, but if the next infection card city has no purple cubes, then add one purple cube instead of a cube of that color. Otherwise, this card has no effect and you do the infection normally. Okay. So there's, uh, there's two of those cards that you add in with it. And uh, like I said, the problem with the Superbug is you can't actually cure it. You can only use it with the, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, ah, uh, see now I can't remember what I was thinking. You can only uh, treat it with the vaccines, but then you also get these things, the bonus, the Superbugs. Uh, use this card as a red city for share knowledge, matches any red cities and discover a cure. Uh, for the uh, the super shiny bonus cards here, those are all uh, the the player back cards that you use with the uh, with the super bug variant. Very very pissed. All right, and uh, in order to win with the super bug, you actually have to eradicate it. You just have to get rid of it because it can't. Uh, it it's, uh, it is curable, and the way that you do it is at a research station, you discard five city cards, including at least two cities with purple cubes. Remove this research station from the game, and you replace it with a vaccine factory and one dose. The vaccine factory is actually just a variation on the, um, uh, the what's it called? The, uh, the regular... Uh, the the regular research station. Uh, so you can see these are the, the actual vaccine doses. There are these uh, nice little uh, green plastic things that they act, they actually look like pills. And then here's the uh, the vaccine factories right there. So the vaccine factories will pump out the vaccine so that you can go and treat everybody and cure all the things. Um, it's it's pretty rough though. So see the treat disease action cannot be used to remove purple disease cues. They can be prevented from being placed uh, by the quarantine markers or uh, from the, um, what's it called, by the, the medic or by uh, the, in this case, the other uh, quarantine specialist. Uh, but three purple cubes begin play in the cities um, uh, based on the, the setup. You have the 24 in the supply. You have vaccine doses uh, to start off with. But then you replace one disease cube with a purple cube during setup uh, when you place the first, fourth, and seventh. So in other words, when you would normally be placing three, you would place two and one purple. When you place two, it would be two and one purple. And when you place one, it's just the, the purple one instead of the regular color. Uh, so yeah. And then you put a superbug infection card on top of the infection deck to guarantee that the superbug is going to start to spread. Very, very bad, very unpleasant. And like I said, I believe personally that it is directly based off of the Ebola crisis that was going on not too long ago. And actually, it still is happening uh, very unpleasantly. But like I said, one thing I absolutely love about this game and its expansions is its versatility. Every single expansion is modular. You've got On the Brink where you've got the bioterrorist and you've got the um, the virulent epidemics instead of the regular epidemics. With uh, it, You've also got the, um, uh, well, the, the bioterrorist, obviously. The uh, pandemic in the lab. You've got the lab challenge. You've got 
the uh, the team play and you've also got solo play and now with state of emergency we've got the hinderlands we've got quarantine we've got the super bug and then that's the other thing I forgot with on the brink is the uh, the special disease where you just use the purple cubes as regular uh, a regular new disease cube so very unpleasant but Tons of variety, lots of variation, lots of different ways you can play this game. You can mix and match and do all sorts of stuff. The only thing you can't do is if you have two separate things that both need the purple cubes, you can't do that. But other than that, you are free to go at your heart's content to split this game and mix and match in any way you see fit. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this aspect for this video for how to play Pandemic and what each expansion has to offer. So I'm going to go right now into uh, my usual, my general conclusions, as well as the pros and cons for this game, as well as the expansions overall. So I hope that you enjoyed my gameplay demo for how to play Pandemic with whatever expansions that you want. Now one thing that I didn't mention uh, throughout most of this video, and I, I want to reiterate from the gameplay guide, is that you may notice that the boxes are uh, have a very different aesthetic from uh, from each other, where the original game and the On the Brink are very different from uh, these two expansions here. And not only that, but just the, uh, the title Pandemic is a very different font, and that's because they released a second edition of both Pandemic and On the Brink. I didn't want to buy the second edition, but you saw that all the cards are still the same. Z-Man Games actually has the cards available. You can just go and you buy the cards for uh, both of these two. But I wanted to keep my first edition because I prefer I prefer it personally. I think that it's a it's a better aesthetic. I think that it's a little bit cleaner. It's less uh, like showy graphically and things like that. I know it sounds kind of weird, but that's just how I am personally. But with that, I'm going to go ahead into some pros and cons and also uh, just some general conclusions for this game. First and foremost, the pro science that's all i can really say i work in science i love science this is a great game that really captures a lot of the feel of how science functions you know people are going out there they're in the field they are working they are trying to get stuff done they go back to the lab they try to analyze everything that's going on they're trying to figure out how everything works how everything fits together and then you have the added threats of, you know, whether it's animals or whether it's additional viruses, bugs, you know, the superbug, whatever it happens to be. Not only that, but adding in the bioterrorist, something very, very real and a very, very true fear that a lot of people have. Um, other than that, uh, uh, another pro, again, this is a great game for relatively new players as well. It is a cooperative game, so everybody is on the same team. You don't have to worry about people picking fights over who's who or what's what or who's doing what and things like that. But then you can also ease in with the bioterrorist variant because that way you have a little bit of competition, uh, but it's still like one person versus everybody. So you have an experienced player play as the bioterrorist and then all of the relatively new people playing as the, the people trying to stop you. And then at the same time, with the uh, within the lab, you have the team variant, which is also another great way to really sort of stepwise introduce people to a competitive format in board gaming because you can start off with just the base or uh, the base and the expansion, but not with the bioterrorist variant, just so that people can get used to, you know, communicating at the table, doing the table talk thing, you know, uh, just talking through what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Is this going to work? Is this okay? Etc. Etc. All that kind of stuff. And then you move gradually into, okay, we need to talk to each other less because now we've got competitors at the table. We can't really necessarily directly ask people what we're going to do, maybe things like that great game for transitioning people from uh, like the the more uh, like basal games you know like uh, Monopoly and Sorry and things like that which aren't necessarily bad games but at the same time uh, with the more modern board games then it can come as a great shock uh, to, to new players so I really I, I absolutely adore the theme I love the fact that this is an a game that's easy to play and easy to pick up cooperative all that kind of stuff uh, on top of that it's a good time limit as well uh, which is something that's relatively rare even in cooperative games where the game can just drag forever and ever and in this there are actually several different timers uh, that when any of them stops then the game is over and the and the good guys lose so that's that's a, a really good thing for it overall it's it's just a great game that's that's my pro is that this is my favorite cooperative game it's uh it's it's just great all around uh, but on uh, below that rather uh, the the cons that I have the biggest con is just this I got four boxes of pandemic stuff 
that's not necessarily a bad thing, but the problem is, the, the good and the bad, the good thing is that all of the expansions are modular. You can take or leave anything and everything that you want from each of these three boxes. And that's great, that's wonderful, that's how an expansion should be in my opinion. The problem is, we've got three expansions! That is a lot of stuff. I mean, you can just imagine trying to play with everything from each of these. Obviously, you can't do that. It's not actually possible. But even trying to combine most of everything is just going to make your head spin so fast that you're not going to have a clue as to what's going on. And none of it's going to make any sense. Now, some some of the rules say, you know, if you're playing with this, don't play with that. If you're playing with that, don't play with this, etc., etc. But at the same time, with so, so many options, it means that it can make the decision making that much more difficult. And in a way, it's kind of a nitpick simply because everything is good, so you kind of want to play with everything. And the problem is you just can't. You just can't play with everything. But then at the same time, you might have the group of people who's very, very intimidated seeing all of this stuff. So at the very least, if you're first, if you're playing with new players especially, just start off with the base and, and on the brink. Don't forget on the brink. All right? Just ha have the most simple game that you can where you've got players all playing together, everybody is working as a single team, you don't worry about any new diseases, you don't worry about any of the weird cards, you don't worry about the bioterrorist or anything along those lines, you don't worry about going to the lab, going to the hinderlands, anything along those lines, just, just leave it out for now. That is the best way to go about doing this, but again, at the same time, it is a bit of a con, simply because there's so much to pick from, a lot of times you can't, you can't figure out what to pick. And um, I know it's the, it's the best kind of problem to have. Uh, another con is basically, I mean, it's, it's also a pro. Uh, for, it's a pro for me, but it can be a con for other people, and that is the theme. A lot of people uh, can, I mean, they, maybe they're like sort of uncomfortable playing a game like this. Uh, they, I, like I said at the very beginning, everybody is more than likely familiar with this type of theme. They are familiar with bad diseases that are happening. We're trying to stop them. But... For some people, it might be a little bit too real, you know, and it might be a, a little bit too sciencey for them, especially with something like in the lab, where it's just like, okay, we're going and we're going to centrifuge these, and they're just like, what? What does that mean? I don't have a clue what's going on, you know, things like that. But again, it's these are more of nitpicks, and it really comes down to an experienced player to to really explain well what's going on. You can even leave a lot of uh, the stuff from these two expansions out of context entirely, and you can just say, look, here's the lab we're doing this stuff so that we can cure the disease and you don't even have to say things like we're we're separating we're we're running like a fax analysis effectively uh, we're we're centrifuging we are we're sequencing the DNA you don't really have to say that you can just say we're gonna take the cubes and we're gonna put them on here and then you know after this is filled up then boom we have the cure same thing with the hinderlands although this this thing is probably something that's more familiar to a lot of people with uh, things like foot and mouth disease and uh, the avian flu and all that kind of stuff They're you're probably very familiar with what this stuff means but again very very complicated the just coming out of the gate with all this stuff I don't personally recommend it that's probably the biggest con that I have with it uh, on top of that uh, just again just generally with the theme but regardless I hope that you enjoyed this video I hope that you also enjoy pandemic I look forward to uh, seeing and reading all of your comments about it and any other games that you wish to talk about but with that thank you so so much for watching I do hope that you enjoyed this and I will see you next time Thank you again for watching my board game review and gameplay demo for Pandemic and all of its expansions. I hope that you enjoyed it and more importantly, I hope that this intrigued you enough to go out and try out this great cooperative game for yourself. As always, please put any and all thoughts into the comments below. I love to hear you guys' feedback. In addition, I would love to hear any suggestions for games that you would like to see me review and demonstrate. As a reminder, I am on Twitter now, at DannyCGamingSci. You can see a link in the description below so that you can get updates whenever I upload new videos and also when I start live streaming various video games. So with that, thank you very much again for watching and I will see you next time.